Good morning, YouTubers. You have reached the Brian Sledge channel. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Uh, thank you very much, and have a great day. Bye. Thanks for subscribing to my channel. This podcast can also be downloaded for free at podcastfiend.com. That's www.podcastfiend.com. Podcast F I E N D dot com. That's Fiend as in friend, without the R. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, author of Stop Mass Hysteria, Michael Savage. It is the rejuvenated Michael Savage. Things are happening in my life that only my fortune teller could have predicted. Now, I must caution you in advance before the show actually begins that I am suffering from a mild bout of food poisoning. I went to an Indian restaurant last night they've been going to for years. I'm not going to talk about And the food was good, but I, I don't know. I came home and I felt like somebody had pumped air into my stomach all the way down to my leg. Like for three hours I was awake last night. I couldn't <laughs> sleep. So I would think something went wrong down there. You know, I took a Pepto and fell asleep, but I'm not feeling that great. I have tremendous energy, but I got a little food poisoning, so you know what I mean? Give me a little break here. Now, the big story today was supposed to be the American Taliban rat boy, John Walker Lynn, who has been released. He wrote in a letter that ISIS was doing a spectacular job. He was released early. He was given a 20-year sentence, and he was released early today in Virginia, which is the hotbed, as you all know. Northern Virginia is the hotbed for Islamic, uh, let us say, uh, machinations. Everyone knows that. I mean, just watch shows like Homeland. Uh, for some reason, they all live there. It's kind of near the capital. You know what I'm saying? That's how that works. Only a moron nation like ours would let this happen. So Taliban goes right to the heart of Islamism, and he gets out early. His father says, in earlier days, this guy uh, clearly would have been shot. Used to be shot. He was a traitor. He was a traitor caught on the battlefield, for God's sake. So I called my attorney, Dan Horowitz, who deals with federal cases like this. And Dan said the president has absolutely no power over this. President Trump could not have intervened. And I said, why? He said, Trump's hands are tied. Uh, most federal sentences, usually they only serve 80, 85% of, of their time. So he served 17 of 20 years. He said the problem here was that his sentence was too short. It shouldn't have been 20 years. It should have been life or, let us say, execution, but it wasn't. So here we are. Now, that's not what I'm going to talk about today. Or I'm not going to talk about the latest podcast I did yesterday, which is the Kardashianization of the American mind, which will live in infamy. It's fabulous. I was going to talk about colonial vegetables, since Occasional Cortex is such a genius. That's the two-year-old in a woman's body with a slight mustache who is uh, now attacking vegetables for being colonial. I've never heard anything like this. I'm not going to talk about any of that because something happened yesterday that's remarkable. And that is this. A major journalist from a major publication is flying out to interview me and sit in on my next Tuesday radio show. Now, hold on. Don't get excited. A major journalist from a major publication is coming out to interview Michael Savage uh, on Memorial Day. We're going to meet at his hotel for drinks, at my suggestion, talk about things. I, um, then I'm then going to show him some of my artifacts, etc. And then on Tuesday, he's going to sit in on this radio show, so you're going to be part of history. What is significant about this interview is that I know he's a liberal. I know he doesn't like Trump. I mean, this is a given going in. But I told him point blank on the phone, I am not a Benedict Arnold to Donald Trump. I like Donald Trump. I think Donald Trump is being swung in directions he never wanted to go by the people around him. And my goal every day in calling balls and strikes is to try to get him back on track, or I'm afraid he will lose in 2020. Now, I, I'm going to say it again. I've said it before. I'm not going to vote for anyone but Donald Trump, but I think that there are a lot of people out there who voted for him at my say-so 
saying give it one more chance because we have to take the chance on a businessman uh, who is not a politician. We took the chance. Now, okay, we've gotten some of our things done. Things are much better in some ways, but not much better with regard to immigration. Not at all. I'm sorry. In fact, they just signed a new bill today. I'm not changing the facts for uh, purposes of uh, of the radio show. Trump backs off call for wall money again. That's how Drudge headlined it. I didn't call. See, the real article is Senate reaches $19 billion deal on disaster aid, but there's not a dime in it for the border. No, Not a dime. Nothing. Not for a taco. Nothing. The deal comes after President Trump agreed to sign the package without any funding for the border, according to Richard Shelby, R. Alabama. So what do you make of this? Trump? What are you making? Well, the headline on Drudge is Trump backs off call for wall money again. That's all. Well, what should I say? It isn't that. So now let's go back to what I'm saying to you. Major journalists from major publication coming out to interview Michael Savage will have drinks on Monday on Memorial Day afternoon. And then on Tuesdays coming to my radio studio to watch a show. You're going to call in if you want and get on the air and see what happens. But I'm going to ask you a question, my loyal listeners. But before I do, I'm going to say something from a personal uh, point of view. The last time I had a, such a major interview was 10 years ago in The New Yorker. I don't know if you remember this, but I'm the only radio host who was interviewed and given a profile in The Liberal New Yorker, and it didn't turn out so badly, did it? And that is because once the writer, who's a great guy, by the way, got to know me, he saw that I was more than the stereotype. I'm not the cartoon so-called right-winger uh, that the other side likes to paint me out to be. And he saw the depth and the intellectual honesty and uh, all of my publications. And the, his interview in The New Yorker is still my favorite to this day. But people said, oh, don't do it. Don't let The New Yorker come out and interview you. Now, why did they not interview anyone else in radio? Because they're shallow, they're empty, they're one-dimensional, and they're boring. The reason they interviewed me is because they see art in my, in my show, in addition to science and intellect. That's why they did so. And they didn't smear me, is the point. I don't think I'll be smeared, but I might be. So what? I can't control what the man writes. But he did promise me one thing. He said, I will not change your words. He said, your words are your words. Okay, so that's it. So I'm going to ask you, the audience... Remember, 10 years ago in 09, I agreed to let the New Yorker send the reporter out. We sat up at my house, had drinks, spent time together. He watched the radio show, and he wrote a very interesting profile of me that is my favorite to this day. But there's not been a major interview of yours truly till now. Now, why is he coming out to see me of all the people? I mean, after all, he could see the beached whale. He could see the beached whale's acolytes. He could see the marionettes that work for the beached whale cartel. But he's not. Why? Because he said, you are the intellectual architect of the Trump campaign. Those are his words, not mine. If you don't like it, it's too bad. Uh, you can't change the fact of reality that I am. So in some ways, they're going to try and blame me for what they don't like in the country. I realize the risks. Do you understand that I understand the risks that are inherent in this particular interview? Is anyone out there listening to this? Or am I, am I just talking to myself here? I'll tell you, Buddy needs to know from you, the audience, one simple thing. And here's the phone number, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Please jump on the line. I want to ask you something. If you were me, what would you advise I say to this reporter? Now, remember, he's no lightweight. He's not from the San Francisco Chronicle. I wouldn't let them in my county, let alone in my house. This is a major journalist who is a liberal, but a fair-minded liberal, according to what I have seen, from a major publication who's coming out to interview me, Michael Savage, and then sit in on my Tuesday radio show. I'm asking you, the audience, what would you say to him? Uh, if you have nothing to say, fine. But if you have something to say, I gave you the phone number. Now, I know that he wants to show that there is discord in the Trump uh, uh, electorate, to, to put it very, very bluntly, and there is. And there is discord, and it's largely over the border, because, ladies and gentlemen of the Savage Nation, what was Donald Trump's signature issue but the border? Was there anything else he ran on other than the border and lock her up? Well, she hasn't been locked up. She was never going to be locked up. Uh, we heard build that wall, and he's tried. The point is, is that he's not the reason the, the wall hasn't been built. The opposition is the reason the wall hasn't been built. It's Pelosi, it's Schumer, it's all of the rest of them. And I am going to say that. So <clears throat> I don't see what I got to lose. If you think differently... You are entitled to think so, 
and you are entitled to call 855-400-7282 and tell me what you would do if you were me when this reporter and photographer come out to interview Michael Savage. I know this is not, not going to make those in the cartel very happy. I know the cartel think that they control everything in the media, left, right, and center. I know the cartel is going to go berserk and make phone calls now to try to stop the interview. I know the cartel is saying, well, well, wait a minute, we're more important than him. Well, we have more stations. Well, we control what's said. No, you don't. You control nothing. They know that you're as empty as a shell with nothing inside of it. You're as empty as a conch shell that someone in Jamaica blows on a beach after the conch has died. That's not a bad metaphor. I like that one, Clint. Do you approve of that one? You're as empty as a conch shell with no conch in it and no conscience to go with it. <laughs> I like the conch. I have a couple of conch shells. Why does nature make a conch that has such a big shell in the shell that the thing dies inside, the cilantroite dies inside, and the shell is left behind? What is that? We don't even leave a shell behind. Uh, yesterday I was talking about turning humans into compost. Unbelievable. I don't want to go there. I mean, yesterday I was talking about colonial vegetables, which I enjoyed. Only in America can a girl as stupid as occasional cortex get up and say a thing like that and not say, you know, I'm crazy. I have to resign from being stupid. She has no conscience, no sense of self, no self-respect, no filter in her brain about how dumb she sounds. And yet she's considered a, a guru by those who believe in global warming. <laughs> how do you like that? Robert Pacifica, line two. You're first up on the Savage Nation. Robert, what's on your mind? Hi, Michael. Well, I just wanted to respond to your question, and uh, I got through. I just wanted to say that if I were, if you were to talk to a liberal journalist, whatever their bias, um, you're obviously affecting hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of people a week. I'm one of them. I'm a highly educated person, retired physician, and I've been listening to you for years. And I think your arguments are cogent, clear, uh, intellectual, and I think, yes, you know, you're never going to be interpreted completely as you'd like to on the other hand what can you do a person of your of your ability and intelligence and stature should be able to handle it you're a new yorker uh interview <laughs> no no i understand what you're saying right and th that that's the truth in other words i'm not going to make stuff up just to appease him but i'm not going to mince words just to appease trump either you know you you've been saying what you've been feeling when you were you know uh, when you were out there uh, saying what you thought about Trump and now in your critiques, it's all good. I, I all right. Well, you know, I appreciate it, doctor. I certainly do, especially from an educated individual such as yourself, a man of science. Uh, before I take my first break, which is the clock, the all important clock in radio, here's a day I could do five hours of radio. I could do a Fidel Castro today, six hours of speaking without interruption. But we don't have a Cuba here on the airwaves. Um, yeah, look. The fact is, I can't control the other man's destiny. I cannot control the other man's thinking. I cannot control the other man's doings or writings. I can only be true to myself and let you know the chips fall where they may, as they say so. I have enemies in the, in the political world, and I have enemies in the radio world who would like to see me dead and gone. I know who they are. I know what they've done behind the scenes. I know how they've conspired to get me off radio stations to put their own cartel members on. I know all of that. But you know what I say when I know about that? I say God sees the truth but waits. I leave vengeance to God, and I leave the other man's opinions to the other man. All I can do is present my side, my arguments, and then hope for the best. And I thank you for listening to me back in a moment. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Not long ago, it felt good to withdraw your cash from the bank, to expand the business, to go on vacation, to buy a new car, remember? But today, withdrawing your own cash has become very, very risky. Listen, according to The Secret War on Cash, a new Swiss America white paper I just read, it made my hair stand on end. You better be careful when you go to the bank. I learned why banks are now required to spy on you and I for the government. And then they report any financial behavior deemed suspicious or unusual. What does that mean? Get The Secret War on Cash now by calling 800-289-2646. 800-289-2646.
Did you know simply spending cash today is enough to get you branded as a potential criminal? You heard me. You better read The Secret War on Cash. It's free by calling 800-289-2646. The new war against cash is really a war against all freedom-loving Americans. Find out how to survive and thrive by reading The Secret War on Cash. It's free if you call 800-289-2646 right now. Michael Savage, weekdays from noon to 3 on Talk Radio 560 KSFO. So uh, Rat Boy, or the American Taliban, is out now living somewhere in a community in northern Virginia, of all places, right across the river from the White House, only in America. And, uh, of course, many people are saying he was a traitor, caught on the battlefield fighting for the enemy. He should have been given a field court, a field marshal. Uh, it's called a field court marshal and shot on, on, on the battlefield. But that's not the world we live in. in t- instead, we have men sitting in prison today in Fort Leavenworth, good, brave, loyal, patriotic soldiers who did nothing except their job as soldiers. And yet this piece of shite is going to be released, is out, because of the uh, liberal uh, liberals in the in the legal profession. It's it's outrageous. Uh, but Trump couldn't have done anything. But I want to ask you again, and I put up no funding for border wall and latest huge bill just signed. They're saying I'm, I, it's fake news. I mean, read the article. A lot of you are stupid. You don't read the articles. You tell me it's fake news when you don't even read the article. So now I posted another tweet. tweet. What should I watch out for in the big interview coming up over the weekend? Okay, I'm asking you that question. It's that simple. And I'll take your calls. Alex in Washington State, line one, what would you say? I've uh, been a listener for 20 years, and from what I've learned, is your show is not about spoon-feeding the people information. It's about articulating your position and having the listeners themselves think about their own position and kind of give the keys to articulate themselves. Well, I'm going to do what I do. You live in Washington State. Do you intend to become human compost? Uh, no. Um, I, oh, oh, you're a throwback. You're an actual, you're a throwback. You actually want a traditional burial. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I wonder if, if the uh, Red Brigades, the Khmer Rouge in Washington State, will make it illegal to actually have a Christian burial. That's just, you know, that'll be considered a bourgeois tradition and a waste of resources and very bad for global warming. When you think of it, the coffin comes from a tree. You're digging up the earth and disturbing the worms. You're not composting. I mean, that's certainly an offense to the Red Brigades that run Washington. Thank you for the call. Monterey, California, Bill Line 6. What would you say to this major journalist from a uh, major publication coming out to interview me over the weekend? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, sure. What's on your mind? Okay, just the, the main thing that I would focus, or one of the main things, is talk about how true conservatives value the environment and we're all about protecting the environment. It's something that's totally been hijacked by the left. Yeah, well, it's been in many of my books. The word conservative and conservation are from the same root. That's right. And, and uh, I, by the way, I'm going to say right on the radio what I'm going to say over the weekend. When I first met the president and those around him at dinner, and just not in casual and passing, I lobbied extensively for the protection of wildlife and for the protection of the earth. And the president agreed with me wholeheartedly. He wanted to stop the elephant slaughter in Africa. He wanted to stop the poaching on our lands. Yeah. He wanted to clean up the earth. And I spoke at the time to the then uh, cabinet secretaries involved with that. And frankly, it went nowhere because the forces behind the cabinet secretaries have prevailed. So again, I did all I could do. It doesn't mean Trump is a rapist of the environment. It means he tried his best and he doesn't have... See, this is the thing. The very thing is the liberal accuse him of, the liberals accuse him of is false. He does not have absolute power. There's only so much any president can do. Even Obama was limited in what he could do and how much he could, could, could get away with. Don't you remember? I mean, giving away $175 billion in secret money to Iran? How'd he pull that one off? Why was that not a scandal? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The president, again, stormed out. I think, what, first pound the table, walk out the door. What? 
next time have the TV cameras in there while I have my say. That didn't work for him either. And now this time, another ten temper tantrum. Uh, um, again, I pray for the President of the United States. I wish that his family or his administration or his staff would have an intervention for the good of the country. Well, Nancy, you should have had an intervention a long time ago. In fact, as you just spoke, you're clearly in need of uh, some kind of medication or, or, or the medication needs to be adjusted one way or the other. No, he doesn't need an intervention. He needs a cooperating opposition is what he needs instead of people like you who will tie up everything he tries to do. It's that simple. Now, people are commenting on Twitter when I posted the following. I used Twitter as a, a, a test for radio, and I said, what should I watch out for in the big interview coming up over the weekend? And people are interesting in what they're saying. One moron says, what is the big interview? The answer is, if you're not listening to the radio show, goodbye. Uh, Bobby says, we'll try to use anything you say to add to the impeachment frenzy of the president. This will be the biggest hit piece of your life. Seeing that the cabal wants to knock you off radio, the personal attacks here on Twitter, be very careful. The leftist reporter is using you or your critiques of the president to influence Trump supporters into losing faith and not voting for him in 2020. It's Trump or we are toast. That's a very rational position. No question about that. And I'll be making it very clear that I am going to vote for the president. Because even if I continue to get 10% of what I dream of getting and what I've uh, architecturally written we should be getting as a nationalist, that 10% is 110% more than I'd be getting from Joe Biden. Make no mistake about it, Joe Biden is a leftist. Joe Biden will do what the party apparatchiks tell him to do. And uh, we all know what their platform is. It, it ranges from eliminating cauliflower to eliminating uh, automobiles. Did you hear the cauliflower piece, Clint? Here is one of the, I don't know how to say, if you say stupid over and over again, it means nothing. This girl has a mental defect. This is a mentally defective human being. Anyone who could sound this f foolish over and over again about in a nail salon, then she's a congresswoman. She's not the, the human waste of DNA Kardashian. She's sitting in Congress and she just shoots her mouth off like what she says is, is gospel. So yesterday she attacks vegetables that are not grown in the tropics as being colonial. I said, I've never heard anything like this. Where do they get this stuff from? Listen to this if you missed it. You won't believe it. Go ahead, please. Right now, as the show begins, I am rifling through my refrigerator to find all of my colonial vegetables because I do not want to be accused of racism. When the uh, green fascists come to my door and open my refrigerator, I want to make certain that all of my colonial vegetables have been purged. Now, it just so happens that this little girl who is perhaps... The stupidest person in the history of Congress does not know. Let's stop right here and play her so they know the context of the piece of me, Clint. That's what I'm asking for, her. Play her. When play someone her. says that it's too hard to do a green space that grows yucca instead of, I don't know, cauliflower or something, you're, what you're doing is that you're taking a colonial approach environmentalism and that is why a lot of communities of color get resistant to certain environmentalist movements because they come with a colonial lens on them do you hear the construct of the words how she drags out as she's trying to actually put the gears in place in her brain now yesterday's podcast was entitled the Kardashianization of the American mind but listen to the subtitle how vanity plus ego plus low IQ has led to the funeral of original thought. How vanity plus ego plus low IQ has led to the funeral of original thought. I, I stand by my uh, description. We're living through the funeral of the American mind right now. When you could hear something like this about colonial vegetables. If it was not for the United States and the U.S. agricultural scientists, the world would be starving right now. Uh, this moron probably doesn't even know about Miracle Rice, who developed it, what University of America developed it when it was sent out to the world and helped feed the starving millions and hundreds of millions around the world. This idiot knows nothing. Everything that this idiot has been taught at Boston University is about how bad the white man is and how bad America is. And you could blame anyone you want, but she is now a congresswoman because of a fluke in Queens, New York, where only 4,000 votes have foisted this psychotic upon us. Now, if she were only a clown in Congress, it wouldn't even be worth mentioning. 
But I will tell you right now that this dangerous child represents to me the Khmer Rouge of Cambodia. She represents the Red Guards and the Red Brigades. She represents a force that, if unleashed in this nation, would see many of us not only lose our freedoms, but lose our lives. Because it's not her who would round you up and put you into a work camp. It's the people on the street with the pipes and the chains and the guns that would be deputized by people like her to go around and round up the average innocent middle class person accusing you of crimes against the environment, crimes against race, uh, crimes against whatever she wants to make up. And that would be uh, something that you would say can't happen here. I know that you say it can't happen here. I can hear the audience say, oh, come on, you're just being hyper hyperbolic. No, I do not need a hyperbaric chamber, and I'm not hyperbolic. I am telling you how these things start. Uh, and I can say it to you over and over again until my mother would say, you're blue in the face, you're not going to hear what I'm saying. This is a very dangerous child because her stupidity is never challenged. That's why, okay? But again, what do you think about the major reporter from the major publication coming out with a photographer, by the way? Because I said to him, why can't we just do this on the phone? He said, no, because I like to meet the people that I'm interviewing, and I'm bringing a photographer. I said, I'm really not into pictures. I don't like them. Ask my publisher. Now, the new picture of me on A, a Savage Life that's coming out for Father's Day is actually one of the most, uh, I don't know the word I want to use, insightful pictures of all ever taken of me. It's going to be, I want, I want that to be the last portrait of me ever done. I don't sit well for pictures. I don't like it. Because, you know, the portrait of Dorian Gray at a certain point is true for all of us. And time and gravity has a way of catching up with all of us, no matter who we are. And I'm not one of these phonies who's going to sit with my arms folded, sit with my arms folded in a leather jacket, making believe I'm a tough guy. I am so sick of those poses of the people on lung machines, heart machines, people with cardiac bypass. What man on earth in his 50s would pose in a leather jacket with his arms crossed like he's a tough guy, but a complete loser? Tell me. Nobody. Well, I'm not going to do it. So what am I supposed to wear for the interview? You know what I'm actually thinking about it now? I'm not on television. I don't even give this, this stuff a thought. i got to get dressed now. You, you, you know what I wear when I do my radio show? Can anyone out, out there guess? No, I'm not in pajamas. No. But I don't particularly get clothing on for a radio show. Now I have to think of clothing and this. And I could never do television like that. I don't like it. I don't like cameras in my face and lights. So here we are. Let's play a little sound for the listeners out there who are getting restless and bored. I, I noticed you have not called, not one call on uh, Johnny Ratboy coming out. None of you care about that. It's very intriguing that it's not a topic that matters to America, and especially to the so-called conservative talk radio audience. And that's, again, an example of the cartel's power over your mind. And how, because when the beach whale in the morning says a word, the mimeograph sheet goes out to all the acolytes in the same cartel, and they repeat the same show all day long. Ask anyone who listens. I get it. I get it from people I know saying, how can they all repeat the same thing that the whale says? I said, why? They get the mimeograph. Remember we used to say when the liberals were in power, they all get a mimeograph sheet in the morning? Raise your hand if you remember that. Oh, they all get the same mimeograph sheet of what to say. Well, that's, friends, I'm telling you, that's what you're getting right now. You've lost the ability to think. You, I don't understand how it happened. Well, I do understand how it happened. But I don't understand how this could go on for this long, and there's been no alternation here. And I never saw anything like it. Is there no other topic but Mueller? There's no other topic you want to talk about? That's all you want to hear about? Well, let me tell you something. Here in San Francisco, I'm on a radio station. And right now, I'm on almost 200 radio stations. Now, I've been around a little while in the radio business. It does not matter how many stations I'm on or how big my audience is. Do you understand why? Because with streaming, with streaming today, you can be heard anywhere in the world. Do you understand that? So what's important is the words. What is very important are the ideas, not so much which station you are heard on. I am still a station guy. I am still a guy who loves the terrestrial radio outlets that I have. In fact, to me, they, they got magical names. When I read a letter like KSFO or W this or K that, I love it because I grew up in the age of radio. I will tell you right now, to radio to me is still magical and so are radio stations. There's nothing like them. But... There are people who listen to me around the globe and around America who don't catch me on radio stations, even though they can, 
because it's a more convenient way for them. It's unfortunate, but that's what's going on. So it's the ideas that matter. So I have all of these ideas I'm trying to send at you. Here's a major reporter for a major publication coming out with a photographer to interview me and sit in on my Tuesday radio show, and I do hope you will join us. And I'm asking you, what would you say to him? I'm going to spend a lot of time with him. He didn't suggest the drinks. I did. Saying, are you crazy, Savage? You're going to sit around with these liberal reporters from the biggest journalistic outlet in the world who you know are going to try and set you up? Yeah, I don't care because I got nothing to hide. Do you understand that? If if I was not who I am, I wouldn't have done it. But I have. I, let me put it this way. The Arabs and the Israelis have been talking for years. The smart ones still talk to each other. People talk to those they disagree with. They don't throw bricks at them. And through dialogue, through dialogue, we can change minds. Do you understand that? I have flawless logic. I back up my statements with facts. So I'm going to give you an example. I know this is going to come at me. You ready for this? They say, okay, Savage, you're the son of an immigrant. You're the only member of the American media, major American media, certainly in radio, who is a first-generation American. Your father was an immigrant. Not my grandfather, my father. Savage, you've said many times on your show that you have one foot in the old world, one foot in the new world. How can you, the son of an immigrant, be so anti-immigrant? That's what I expect someone's going to ask me. Well, it's a simple answer because I've given it to you, my audience, first many times. It's the same answer. When my grandfather came over here, there was no welfare system. They came here to work or they fell by the wayside or they were taken care of by their own families. There was nobody who lived on welfare. There was nobody living on public service to any extent that I know of in those days. And so when you see the Statue of Liberty give me a tired, you're poor, you're hungry, and those yearning to be free, it sounds good, right? But it meant nothing. What they were doing was bringing in virtual slave labor from Europe to work in the garment center in New York, in the factories, in Scranton, Pennsylvania, in the coal mines, in the steel mills. They were bringing in the men to work, to work, to work. You say, well, aren't they doing that now? Uh, have you seen the latest variety of immigrant pouring over the border? Have you seen how many of them are 14 and 15 year old girls with children? You're telling me they're coming here to work? I would argue to the contrary. I'm Michael Savage. Be back in a moment. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Now, more of the Savage Nation on Talk Radio 560, KSFO. Are we getting into Memorial Day weekend? A lot of you are going to be in your cars. What, what are you going to do if your car breaks down? You need options. Instead, you're going to be stuck at the last minute looking for a bargain, the best deal, because you may not be able to spend $1,000 for a simple repair, right? It's happened. It's going to happen. It can happen. It will happen. It'll happen to some people. You can't put a price on your family's safety and security. And that's why I'm telling you to get extended vehicle protection from CarShield. CarShield makes the process of fixing your car for a covered repair very easy. Pick your own mechanic. Dealership can do the work. Your choice. They also give you 24-7 roadside assistance and a rental car while yours are being fixed for absolutely free for nothing. So pay attention. If your car has 5,000 or 150,000 miles, it doesn't mean you have to pay high repair bills. CarShield administrators have paid out close to $2 billion in claims. They're ready to help you. They're the real McCoy. Save yourself thousands in future car repairs. Get covered by the ultimate in extended vehicle protection. Just call their new toll-free number. That is called 800-CAR-6000. 800 car 6000 code savage or visit carshield.com code savage not only would you save 10 percent you'll save yourself a headache if your car breaks down that's carshield.com code savage or call carshield's new toll-free number 800 car 6000 and mention code savage a deductible may uh, apply houston texas thanks for calling andrew what's on your mind andrew yes sir andrew go yes. ahead what's on your mind yeah, what I want to say is that for your upcoming interview, um, first of all, two points. You should have Teddy there. Yep. To do Teddy is my attack poodle, right. I'll, I'll sick him on the reporter if he gets out of control. There you go. And you should do at least a uh, half hour live with the interviewer. We you know, a lot of people are saying I should ask him to come on the air with me. 
Yes. That's a very interesting on-air interview idea. I don't know if he'll do it, but I would like to. I think that'd be a great show, wouldn't wouldn't you? Yeah, I, I, I would love that. I, or, and I would love if you could go into the podcast, if you couldn't do it for the full time. Oh, my God. What a great podcast that would be to record the interview as a podcast. Yes, sir. What, oh, now I'm going to suggest that once he's out here. Yeah. What a great idea. Okay, good idea. See, my people are the smartest in the world. Danny in California, line nine, you say what? Uh, Michael, I've listened to you for years. I was a confirmed liberal until I started listening to you. And I believe believe you because you're a man of God. And uh, my father was came over in Mexico, from Mexico back in the 30s, married my mother, who was 15 at the time. I uh, was born in 1937. And... Uh, Knew nothing about politics at that age uh, when I got married. Uh, I saw my. So, what, what would you suggest, sir, that I do with the interview? Tell me what to watch out for. I'm watching out. Oh, I, I, I just can't understand how anybody would ever say anything good about you. That's on on the liberal. <laughs> well, you know, you're not the first. <laughs> you're, not, you're not the only one warning me to not do the interview, but I've already done it. I'm committed to it, rather. Oh, I, and uh, Danny, let me just say this. I wasn't born yesterday, and I believe that dialogue holds the hope for America. Let me, let me give you a really great speech that I hope doesn't sound like a series of platitudes. I believe we have to talk to our intelligent opponents. I am not talking about the street thugs. We're not talking about Antifa. We're not talking about people who rant in the streets and yell and beat people up. We are talking about reasonable, considered individuals who are politically opposite to us. Maybe they have not been exposed to someone who can reason with them because they live in a bubble. But if these gentlemen are coming 3,000 miles out to see me and then going back 3,000 miles, they're investing a lot of time and money. And I intend to use all my powers of reason and persuasion to tell them about the beauties and truths of borders, language, and culture. Savage. 